Foquetín del Rio. Miguel del Rio and Hans Foquetín founded Foquetín del Rio in 2013, so it's a really young office in Basel. As they define themselves, is a concept-driven architectural office which pursues a constant research and development that reaches the unexpected discoveries. Quite a challenge. <laughs> Their, um, has been their, their work has been recently awarded with the Foundation Award in 2014, a prize given to the most promising architectural practice in Switzerland each year. And they are actually developing a major project in the city of Basel, the refurbishment of the military barracks into a cultural center. I don't know if you can talk yeah, about exactly. that. So hi, everybody. I'm Miquel. I'm the Del Rio of uh, Fogitin Del Rio Studio. We are a specific thing because we are a Swiss office with no Swiss partner. No? And that defines very much who we are and that defines us uh, very much in, a, in an environment. We are Switzerland, uh, not like uh, Spain or Catalonia in this moment, uh, still lives on a moment of uh, very strong uh, administrations and this means a lot of competitions. No? And we were lucky enough to win uh, a very big competition in, in Basel, which is basically what, uh, what runs the office, and that's the one that we want to talk, because we thought it was very, very good for this topic, no? politics and architecture, or how, how the architect is an autonomous thing. So this is Basel. Basel uh, is defined by the river, basically. There was a small hill here, which is where the city started. They, they had here some walls, and then at one point they extended to the other part. Basel is at the same time um, a, a city which is at the, at the end of the river. This means that a lot of industries came here because then the pollution will go to the next city, of course. And, uh, and this made uh, Basel a very, a very open city. And at the same time, Basel is a, a canton in itself. It's like the, the, the highest uh, political part uh, of, uh, you, know, you know, Switzerland is a confederation. And Basel is a, a canton in itself. That makes it a very urban um, Canton, a very progressive canton, is one, every time you see referendums about uh, not being at it or about kicking the foreigners out, in Basel they always, they always disappear. No? And, um, and in this context we appear a, a competition about, the, as, as you were saying before, the military barracks. No? This is um, Basel, we are on the other side, on Klein Basel. Uh, and uh, you know that in Switzerland still the, the army exists a lot and people have to do military service and then in fact uh, the army is basically all the, all the civil uh, population that uh, men, that are no, women or something, no, no, not still. Um, and in this situation uh, the, the, the old military barracks that were built here, a building of 150 years old, are dismantled and the people, the, the soldiers go out. And of course, this is an amazing opportunity for the city. The, you can see that the, the barracks make an ensemble, no? leave a void in the middle, and suddenly in the middle of the city appears a big void. No? And this creates a, a huge opportunity for Basel, starts the, the discussion, many, many, many projects, many opinions, and at the end of the decision is laissez-faire. No, and then suddenly it starts to appear restaurants, uh, a, a mosque, uh, several venues, ateliers for artists. They build here a small um, um, uh, gym. And at the end, the, the building which is left is the, the one in the, in the center that becomes a, a school. So in this context, of, a, of an ensemble in the middle of the city, defining the river, which is the main public space, and defining the, the back stays like, a, like an empty building. So when we start the office, we, start, we said from the beginning we are a Basel office, even though we are not uh, from Basel, but... Where is he from? <coughs> Hans is originally from Belgium, but grew up in Switzerland, and I'm from Barcelona, as you can understand by my fantastic accent. Uh, <laughs> so... Um, the military barracks, no? Where the, this part has already been activated, this part is ateliers and things, and then the big building in the, that defines the, the, the ensemble is still not touched. So the competition asks for mainly three things. Asks, one, that a question that, that has been posed many times, what is the relationship between this and this? No? It's a, there's been already four competitions in this site, do we tear this thing down? Do we make an opening? Do we uh, open the sites? So finally, after 40 years of discussion, 
we open the office and the discussion is clear. Uh, we want to keep the building but still allow a connection. So the first thing is connection between these two things. The second thing is, okay, this is a building that's 150 years old, no? So we need to bring it to the new standards. New standards meaning uh, energy, a new standards meaning uh, fire, new standards meaning uh, uh, comfort also. And the third thing is uh, what we want to do here. We want to do here a creative center. What is clear is that it's a place where uh, creative people will go. This means uh, enterprises that have um, that are creative related come here. It means also that we have a big um, uh, sala. It means also that we have uh, some ateliers and some co-working. And that's basically the competition. No? And then how do we do the competition? That's something that we started then and we keep, we keep uh, doing. As I, as I told you, Basel is a very political, leftish uh, and cultural environment. No? So the first thing that we did is to recruit people from the, from the cultural scene, what we call the cultural uh, assistance. And with them, we started discussing the, the project. No? And then the next thing that, uh, that you do is, well, we completed the, the, um, the network with the classical, the people who have the renderings, the images, all, all the things that always. And then the, the next thing that you do is you go and visit. No? This is for us very important. Every project starts going to the place. No? That is the, the facade to the river. No? So it's, uh, it's like a, a lot of cameras. Every time you open one of them, it's uh, more full, more empty, more things, less things. And that is the, the view to the, to the plaza. And we were really obsessed by this line, no? Because this was explaining us, uh, talking all the time about autonomy of architecture, no? Like, you, the first thing that you have to do is to look at how things are built and how things are used. And this line, this fantastic yellow line that become our obsession, says that as this is a corridor for these guys, they need to leave a space in between and they can only colonize this. And this was the, the Mode Institute, the Mode Institute, and you can see that they use every single square meter of this corridor. That's um, that going purely again to the to the architecture. That's the that's the building. The building is it's very clear. It's a, it's the first so one of the first examples of military caserne, and they work always uh, in a similar way. You have this big corridor here, we call it corridor, but in fact it's not with a stair, and then the camera that we were saying before. No? And I say we call it corridor, but it's not because in fact this now we of course we, you see things the way you the, you are used to see them. No, so you think. To arrive to a room, I go through a corridor. So the place before is a corridor. But in fact, this was not a corridor. In fact, people, uh, the soldiers were doing here activities. One time there were too many soldiers and they were sleeping here. And they, were, they will become changing rooms. They will become really an activity place. No? And that's what we said, OK, that's what we need to do. That's, that's the, the goal of the competition. In the competition, the, the proposal or the studies were to put a um, stair here and a stair here. Of course, from what I said, you can imagine that people will have to go out will have to come here, and this will become only a corridor, and therefore a not used space. No? The, the main concept of the project was how to relate the two things. So suddenly, by doing, by doing something as simple as putting the stairs here, what we were doing is we were saying all this facade is a dead facade, and all this facade is an activity facade. Uh, at the time, we were doing other competitions, and then our proposal was to put the course here and here. By doing this simple thing of rotating 90 degrees, then these guys exit directly here, these guys exit directly here, and this is not anymore a corridor. You can be a corridor or not, and the same thing, the same thing here. No? These guys exit here, these guys exit here, and these guys are not anymore a corridor because nobody needs to go there. And that's how, how we started the competition. No? That, that, that was like the strategical uh, decision that, that we did. This, of course, has a lot of consequences because what happened is that suddenly we had a lot of square meters because everybody was, only, was having corridors and we were having uses. And this what allowed us is to, um, to put an extra thing. And that's, that's where I think it's important of, of the topic of today. Like, precisely by using the architectural tools, no? the, the, the inside of the architecture, like the fucking fire regulations, by using that, you allow the possibility to give more things. No? And what we said is we're going to give what we call the bubbles of air. No? So we created this space, which was a, a space which was not demanded, but what was, was more important. We said that um, the caserne connects the river on, on, on one level and the plaza on the other level. But we, we didn't want only a connection, we wanted a place to stay. And by winning all these square meters, we were able to graph, no? to carve this space here. We were able to carve this space here that will become a proper uh, sala, because they were asking for a sala of three meters, and we were like, hey, that, that doesn't make sense. So we were able to carve this space again, and we were able also to carve a space here that, that I will show you. So that's basically the, 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 the competition, the, the project. This is also funny because this is also 
uh, talking about autonomy, no? This is what is this? This is a model that we do in the office to understand the project, no? And suddenly we bring it to the politics, and the politics are like, wow, no? Now the next thing is that this is going to be uh, exposed on a, on a public thing, no? But also like how a lot of times you just think for yourself, and this becomes something that the, that the politics can use. So you can see that the building at the end is, is quite clear, no? You see the two cores. You see what we call the round group and that work here and that work here. And then in the center, we also talk that by doing this, you create like three houses. No? This house has this core, this house has this core, and this house has the, the existing core that you see here on the back. So you have the main rooms here, the main rooms here, and here the big three rooms. The um, plaza, which was the space that was not demanded. This is a new social space. No consume, people, every, everybody can be there. The big question here was also, where is the people in, in winter? No? In summer, it's very clear, they're all here in the river. Where is the people in winter? So what we, we said, okay, what we need to create is a covered plaza, it's a place for people to go in winter. <coughs> on top of this uh, plaza is the, um, the sala, and on top of this we have the, the program. And then the two, the two houses on the side. So I explained um, the, how we did the regulations, no? this, this, this strategical position of putting two cores that allows that the uh, fire regulations work very well. This, of course, stiffens the whole building and uh, works also for, uh, for, urban, for the earthquake. And we explained also how do we use it in, into a new thing. And the third thing that they were asking us is, um, is how to cross, no? how to connect these two buildings. In the competition, they were proposing to demolish this guy, which we thought it was a big, big mistake because then you will lose the concept of ensemble, of ensemble, which is a main thing in the, in the, in the plaza. But we, st we still thought that we needed a, a, a place here. No? So at the end, what we, we, we thought also that like every urban decision cannot be unitary. No? You cannot say to the people, hey guys, all of you go here. No? If you want to be urban, if you want to be social, you have to allow multiplicity. No? That's, that's what we did. So you had the main thing inside the, the building, which will be closed at night. But then you will have this one on the side that will always be open. Then you have another one which was linked to a uh, um, neighborhood use, which now is the Moshe. The Moshe is now uh, part of, the, of, of our project. And then you have the internal communications uh, of, of the building. And this, this allowed, what we said is that made the building a porous building. No? Before you will arrive to the plaza, you will have the big building there, a little bit scary. And by doing this, by, by proposing a lot of uh, different uh, uh, connections, what we did is we animated the building, and the building becomes like a sponge, no? a, a building that in different moments allows different people to cross in different ways. And this for us is also very important, the idea of multiplicity. Those were the images that we did for the competition that tried, tried to explain a little bit how the building is. No? The, 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 there was also like a very, a very strategical uh, uh, decision, which is, as I said before, we work in Switzerland. No? And in Switzerland, we are in a good moment economically, but it also forces you to work inside the system. And we knew that the jury will be the politics. No? So at the end, your images also become a tool of communication for a certain specific people. So this, was a, a, this is the, the, the corridor, no? how in, how, showing how the corridor is not anymore a corridor. There is no, more, any, there is no, no anymore uh, yellow lines, and the people can really use this thing and activate also the facade to the plaza. This is what we were saying before, no? the ensemble that we needed to, to keep, that was very important for us. And the small hole that we do here, or big hole, this depends on the day and on the article of the newspaper, uh, <laughs> that, uh, that, that allows the people to, to, to go all the time and keep the ensemble. Then the Rhine, the, the, the picture on, on the other side, no? also the connection, the inside connection, and how do we activate by bringing all the windows down, we allowed all the restaurants and all the galleries to um, show and to flood the, this space with, with new uses. And this, which was, of course, our main space or our more um, uh, strategic thing, no? like in between this space and this is, and in between this space and this space, what we do is we offer a third space. No? It was not anymore crossing, it's not anymore the making the building disappear, it was to create another thing. Mm. Politics. So the, the, we won this uh, like two and a half years ago or something like this. Uh, it's, a, it's a very long process uh, with a lot, of, a lot of different actors. And uh, it's funny because uh, the way we talk about the building and the way we explain it is mainly about non-pure um, 
uh, architectural questions. No? It's like uh, connection can be architecture or can be sociology or uh, um, use of the thing, uh, program is architecture or can be whatever it else. No? And the funny thing is that right now we are in a phase where to defend all these things that we created, we have to be super architectural. No? And the kind of renders that we are doing right now are these kind of renders. Because now we have to, they, they said, okay, you won, it's good, but now tell us what you do. Tell us how expensive it is. Tell us what are the materials. Tell us, and then the discussion. It's funny because it's to defend a, a non architectural de decision turns sheets completely into the architectural. No? Now, this is, you can see, the, the, the view of the, of the plaza. The idea of bringing the outside um, pavement to the inside, no? this concept of how to, make a, how to make an inside and outside is the, the plaza. No? It's also like the choice of the materials are also um, very significant. Do you choose one thing or another thing and you have to say different things? The stair going down that becomes a place to stay. This is the, 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 also the plaza no? and how in the plaza we take the, the, um, the existing um, puts, which is something like this. No? And we cover it with a with a thicker one that you really feel that you are you are on the outside, and also like starting to go in the detail, not to say okay, the the, the the walls change in the in the in the building, no, in thickness. So you start also somehow to show uh, different lines and to reveal the history of the building. This is the the sala, no, in the sala uh, it's a much more uh, how you were calling it before materiality and <laughs> authenticity. And then it's uh, the, the existing, the existing uh, uh, walls that are basically just uh, reparated. Uh, re we take out the, the existing thing, we repair it locally, and we paint it with a, with a, with a lazur, and how it's uh, the other facade, no? with the, the place where you enter, and this new balcony that appears that also explains how is the verticality of, of the space. This is the, the course, no? I think Omar published this, uh, this image the other day. So the course, um, the course, uh, this is also because at the beginning they, we, we, we received this invitation from you. No? Yeah, it's about the autonomy. So we thought it was about the autonomy of the object, no? which is also you, you brought today, and I think you also brought a little bit today. And we were thinking, because there's also something beautiful about the, 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 the project, which is at the beginning we were like, yeah, but Caserne is not an autonomous project, because the main thing is that it connects everything and it's either a part of an ensemble. But then we started to realize, no, in fact, it is an autonomous building. It has some rules that define it. And the first thing that we have to do is to know what are the autonomy of this, of this building and then try to, to, to crack the code. No? We always talk about this thing like cracking the code. And then the beauty also is that inside this, this unique and this uh, uni uniform uh, object, we start to create objects inside and each of them is independent. No? And th those are the cores, the cores that we were talking before, that they become uh, in a red concrete, almost like, you, this is, in Basel, all the public buildings are red, because the red stone was the thing which was expensive, and that is why you know, the power has to show always that it's the power, and they do it in the expensive way. So we said, let's try to think that the whole building was that in this red stone, and what we do is we carve this space in the new. No? And those are the rooms, that the rooms basically stay as it is, and we, we talk to them on a much more applied surface, you know, like we, we apply uh, um, a cable a cable channel that goes down, maybe also in this material that we were saying before, the, um, the absorption is really panels applied that also help us to diffuse the light, and it's, uh, this is a, a much more um, uh, easy going, and, and we understand the, that this thing will change a lot. No? This, we always say that the, the building already lived 150 years old, and what we do now should also be for 150 years. No? And the building was able to live many lives, and I was showing at the beginning all these different rooms, and we said, yeah, these buildings, these rooms will also be different in the future. No? So we basically leave the things as it is, we, we repair them when we need it, and, uh, and we allow also what, is the, the, what are the rules that, the, that people will change. Mm. As I said, no? a puzzle, a super political um, um, place, a leftish culture, uh, we, had to, we had to work in there. Um, and what do we think about the, the topic? No? We like a lot this, this image. Um, <laughs> you, you know, this is the Hans, Hans Holling. No, how's his name? Mm -hmm. Hans Holling is the a guy from Austria, uh, quite crazy, and he was totally autonomous. No? And I think that the image shows, I mean, he's trying to show how you can work outside, connected to everybody, but at the end, this is showing, like, okay, the fucking architect is inside his bubble, you know? And the cameras are filming, are filming him. 
So we think that architecture should not be autonomous. No? For us, it's, it's very easy to say. First, because we are two. So the autonomy is of time under pressure. We, we, we do by discussing. No? And not only between us, but also with the network, no? like uh, people doing renderings here, the landscape in, in Zurich, uh, the structural engineering in Basel. So there's a constant uh, discussion in, in, in the whole thing. Um, Second, this is like the first fear, which is us. Second fear is um, the user. No, we think that we said that we start. How do we start uh, the caserne? We start by going there and looking at it. No, and this I think is that, that's that's also the moment. No, I, I, liked, I liked a lot also when you were saying that uh, the birds don't give a shit about the shape. No, and then that's something that that, that you go there. Or when you were saying that uh, you try to do things and then that that they they, they keep living without you. No, so there is a second fear, which is the the. Um, the, the, the user, that the, the person, and then there's a third sphere, which is the society, you know, like in, the, in Caserne, they didn't ask for this public space, no, but I think as architects, we have like, a, we have to be politically engaged and we have to be like a seismographer and understand also what is the thing that is happening there and how can you, how can you relate to that. At the same time, we wanted to put like this picture of the Parthenon, no, architecture operates with specific tools, no. We want to make the world a better place, this is clear, but we have to make it within the architecture. I cannot make it within the politics, I cannot make it within the, the doctor, because I'm not an architect, I'm not a, I'm not a doctor. No? And this for us is also important. And I think this is also very important for us, because as I said before, before we work on a very strong um, framework. No? Like um, the competitions are there, and when you do a competition, architects will, will check what you're doing. So somehow you are, within the system, no? and that somehow, maybe I invite a couple, a little bit of you, that you are maybe a little bit more able to, to be doing more free, and we have to operate hardcore inside the, the, the um, architecture tools. And this, this for us, um, so we think that there is, um, there is a need, we should not be autonomous, no? at the same time, we have a certain tools, that, that are the tools that we operate with, and then how we think at the end is the way you do, what you do with these, with these, with these tools is what, what, will, what will make that your thing is autonomous or not, political uh, or not. No? And we always talk about, uh, about soft radicality. We think that the first thing is that we as architects need to be politically engaged. No? We need to know that what we do at the end makes society on one side and on another side, especially in projects like this. No? And we know that at the same time, we work in, in a very um, hardcore uh, political uh, environment that you cannot just arrive and break it. No? So we like to be, you know, we always like, say, we like to say that we try to say uh, strong concepts hidden in between beautiful words. So that was it. Thanks a lot.